Hey YouTubers, uh, this is fun. This is my shirt. One of the things I had made for the people who completed No Yell November challenge. Uh, one of the prizes that they are getting sent this month. So next year, make sure you follow along because you could win awesome prizes like cool shirts that say I am awesome. So anyways, let's get started. All right, welcome back friends to another week of Called the Homeschool. Making sure my audio is on. I also can hear my four-year-old in the background having a major meltdown. So I hope you enjoy real life. Um, my daughter is bathing him and he is the first child I've ever met who has hated baths his whole entire life and shower and, and, and all of the above. We've tried everything and we've just decided he's just going to hate them um, and that we're okay that he hates them. So anyway, if you hear him screaming in the back, he is okay and somebody is with him, but he is getting put in the tub right now. All right. Well, first let's start with some housekeeping business. I don't know about you, but a lot of mamas need a little mental break around Christmas time. I was talking about this in my mama's members that you get to pick what your school looks like in December. Whether or not you just like to continue with what your regular schedule is and go through and just take off a few days for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and maybe New Year's, fantastic. That's great. If you were like, guess what? We do one week of school in December and we don't do a whole lot for the rest of the December. Fantastic. Maybe you're like, we do a couple, a week of school and then we do some really basic stuff for the rest of December. And then we take off the whole week of Christmas. Fantastic. There is no right or wrong, wrong way because it is your homeschool schedule. So you always get to remember that you get to do it how you want to do that. With that being said, each year in December, I have noticed that my podcast listens go down dramatically. I remember when Karen and I were both doing the podcast, we often threw out the idea of taking off December. And this year, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, as I do the podcast by myself and have my own children and my own homeschool and uh, my all the things I'm doing this Christmas that it just it'll be a great thing for all of us maybe you wanted to get caught up on some other episodes fantastic or just take a break from podcasts and on in December that's great too and then I will be back in January so that is my housekeeping business so now to today's episode a closet homeschooler. <laughs> what is that? That is what I was for a really, really long time. I was a secret homeschooler. I did not want people to know that I homeschooled. Why? Because I didn't want to hear their judgments. I didn't want to hear their criticism. And basically, I didn't want their opinion on what I was doing. So if we ever moved or met new people, I would prep my children and say, we don't tell people we homeschool. Just let them get to know us. Let them know that maybe we were just weird, that we're not homeschool weird, right? And mind you, I people will say this often, that I homeschooled before it was cool. <laughs> so I was that was an extra thing for me that I thought, I just want people to get to know us and know that we're fun or all these things before they add in their judgments about homeschool or tell us their thoughts about it. Um, so it's super funny that it's odd now that I am actually super vocal <laughs> about homeschooling now. But it definitely took me a long time to be comfortable sharing my decision with others and even sharing what I do in my homeschool. Well, the other day, my oldest daughter and I were looking at some of my old high school pictures. That's, <laughs> that's an interesting experience. Why are you doing this, mom? Oh, why are you wearing this? Like, oh, okay. Anyway, we were looking at these pictures and we were talking about while I was in high school, I was in a pretty serious car crash. I was with four other friends and we were in an SUV and we were in a rollover. This was a pretty intense crash and we actually took out two fences and uh, took out a tree and the tree is actually what helped us stop if not before we knocked it over. And uh, so it was a pretty intense car crash. Um, now this was a time before cell phones, but I still have gobs and gobs of other high school pictures. But you know what I don't have? A picture of what I looked like after that crash. Now I swear one of my sisters took a picture of me in this accident but I cannot find those pictures so maybe they have them and I've seen them before but in my own memory box I did not keep any picture of me from this accident. Um, it was a pretty I was pretty banged up. I was in the front passenger seat with no seat belt on and I my face hit the windshield pretty hard and I broke my nose um, I cut up my whole face. I had glass cuts all over my face. I actually bit through the bottom part of my mouth. 
So I, there were stitches there, um, rug burn all over my face from hitting the top of the roof, right? Like I was a mess. I also cut up my hands, broke my wrist, so I had a cast on, um, rug burns all over my body from getting tossed around as we were rolling, all those types of things. So a pretty, pretty intense car crash with no evidence of it. Nobody's judgment, nobody could say or anything. Um, and it's funny, I actually even went to dances and my face had healed up but I still had a cast on. And so it was interesting that any picture that where you would have been able to see my cast, my arm was behind my date or behind me, or I would put on a long sleeve shirt for the picture. So it was so interesting that I would want to hide, which has made me think this is very interesting and apparently a habit of mine. And I remember I did this with George when I got pregnant with him. I didn't tell anybody, obviously my husband and my children, and I told close family, but there's not one maternity picture of me on social media until after he was born. And my husband, who loves to post all sorts of things all over social media, I said, please, please do not post any pictures of me pregnant. Why? Because I don't want to hear other people's opinions. I heard all the jokes. Do you not know what birth control is? Do you know how babies are made? Um, I've even had people joke to me, you know, you can't just pray to not get pregnant. Yes, I know those things. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that was sarcastic. Um, so I apparently love to hide. I like to hide when there's something different. Getting pregnant with the seventh baby was different than what other people were doing and I wanted to hide. Uh, getting in a car crash wasn't even something I <laughs> was trying to do, right? Uh, happened and I hid it. I hid pictures of it. There's no memory of it really, right? Um, and obviously with homeschooling, I hid it again. I don't only hide what I perceive as failures, but I actually even hide my successes and I don't even tell people about cool things I'm going to do, right? Maybe you're like that too, that you're going to go on a trip somewhere neat and you're like, I don't even, I don't want to hear people's opinion. I don't want to hear people say like, that's not fair. I want to go there. Why do you get to go there? Or why do you get to do this or have this or whatnot? And so I hide, I hide the failures. I hide the successes. I just hide. Now, as you know, I love Brooke Snow and um, I have been listening to her meditations from the small seed love more, way less. And on one of the meditations, it is called I am seen. And I was on a morning walk listening to this meditation and it dawned on me, you think it would have, I would have figured this out earlier, but how much I am afraid to be truly seen. I, uh, I apparently hide all the time. So one of the things I hid, another thing was years ago, I attempted a half Ironman. And this was before George and after Brigham, so maybe six or seven years ago. But in a half Ironman, you swim 1.2 miles, bike 56 miles, and then run 13.1 miles. And I didn't really tell anybody what I was doing. My husband did take one picture, and I think he posted it, but I sure as heck did not. Um, then race day came, and I bombed. I did just fine on the swim. I've always been pretty comfortable in the water, and so that wasn't bad but I ran out of gas on the bike and I sat down on the side of the road and cried, cried my little eyes out. So much so that by the time I got back into the transition to go to the run, I was one minute past cutoff time and was pulled from the course. I was relieved that I didn't say anything to other people because then they would have seen my failures and it would have been public and people would know. So I was so grateful that I hadn't told people. Well, after listening to this meditation, I am seen. I realize that being more vulnerable and sharing you with you my wins and my failures are so helpful. I know I learn and grow so much as people allow others to see their experience, to see the hard days, to see the grueling parts. Part of the reason I feel more comfortable sharing about my homeschool is because I'm at a place where it runs really well. I'm past those grueling days and those days where I was crying out, crying or um, grumpy with my kids, right? But posting while I'm in the middle of it to me feels very vulnerable and very scary. Um, it's one thing to share a failure from years ago, as I've shared different things that I've done in homeschool that was years ago, but it's another self thing to put myself out there where I might fail in front of everyone. But friends, I am ready to be seen. I am ready. I feel emotional as even I said I say this. I'm ready to show all the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful. So I wanted to share something that I'm super scared about that I am now attempting. Another half Ironman. 
So my neighbor knew about my attempt in the St. George Ironman all those years ago and has tried to convince me to do the Oceanside one because it is a much easier course and, that he, in his opinion, a much better course. Well, he came and talked to me one day and told me, Meg, tomorrow Oceanside registration opens up. Now, my sweet husband, who does not like endurance events, um, reminded me when I, oh, he was in Africa when this happened. So I messaged him and said, hey, this is tomorrow. So he did remind me that he still does not like endurance events, but obviously said, it is your choice and I will support you in whatever you ch choose to do. I tossed and turned all night long. I have so many good reasons to not do this race. I'm older. I have extra weight on me from Georgie. Um, I know the time and the monetary commitments this race is going to be. But I had one thought that swayed my decision, and that was the idea of, you know you will regret this if you don't do it. So the next day, I dropped way too much money and signed up for the race. This time, I want things to be different. Instead of hiding and trying to do it on my own, the first thing I did after I signed up for the race was I hired a coach. I am working with the lovely Cami Banks, who is also a life coach certified from the Life Coach School and is a triathlon coach. And I have been working with her for the past few weeks. When I interviewed her, one of the comments she said was that I can for sure get you across that finish line. As I've done the workouts that she has prescribed and aligned my nutrition with, nutrition with her suggestions, I know I will be able to cross that finish line this time. Going into this, my thought has been, I'm willing to do my workouts even when I don't feel like it. I am going to be sharing parts of my journey with you on Instagram. Maybe I'll even do another episode as I get thicker into the training with it when it gets really uncomfortable and long and days where I don't feel like doing it. Um, but partly I want to show you the process of being in the middle of something that pushes you way past your comfort zone. And the part, other part is for my own self of willing to be seen, even on days that don't go so great, even on days when maybe I bomb or I cut a, a workout in half or whatever it is. I don't know if you have parts of your life where you are afraid to be seen or afraid to hear the criticism. For you and myself, remember that courage is feeling afraid and doing it anyway. So in whatever you are trying to accomplish, whether it's a personal goal or something with your homeschool, I want to challenge you to have courage, my friend. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for all the listens, all the love, all the sharing that you guys will do. And I will see you again in January. So have an amazing Christmas and a wonderful holiday. Love you guys.